Creating the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture is a grand endeavor, and a grand endeavor necessitates visionary leadership with courage and a willingness to dream big. Well, such a leader has been guiding the development of this museum for six years. His efforts have brought us this moment, and his guidance will take us to the day when the National Museum of African American History and Culture opens its doors on this spot. Please welcome the founding director of this museum, Lonnie Bunch. What a grand and glorious day, and they said it was going to snow. <laughs> President and Mrs. Obama, members of Congress, the Smithsonian Regents, the Presidential Commission, the Museum's Council, distinguished, distinguished guests, and dear friends, I am honored and humbled to welcome you to this groundbreaking ceremony for the newest museum of the Smithsonian Institution, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I just love to say that. <laughs> Your presence today is a clear reminder of the unflagging support and leadership that you have provided this endeavor. We are at this moment. We have come this far, not by faith alone, but because of your belief in the importance of this museum. While there are too many donors and supporters to name, I want you to know just how much the Smithsonian appreciates the support of President and Mrs. Obama, of the US Congress, and of all the corporations, foundations, and individuals in communities across America who have given so much to make this moment possible. I especially want to acknowledge the Council of the Museum that is co-chaired by Linda Johnson Rice and Dick Parsons. We are so indebted to you because you believed when there wasn't much to believe in. So we are so grateful for your leadership. Today, in the words of Washington, D.C. poet Louis Alexander, we call the lost dream back. Today, we begin to make manifest on this mall, on this sacred space, the dreams of many generations who fought for and believe that there should be a site in the nation's capital that will help all Americans remember and honor African American history and culture. But equally important to this vision was to need to make better all who visit the National Museum by using African American culture as a lens to more clearly understand what it means to be an American. So with groundbreaking, we mark a major milestone in the creation of this museum. A museum that, as the beloved historian John O. Franklin used to always say to me, it must tell the unvarnished truth. Because this will be a museum that will have moments to make one cry or to ponder the pain of slavery and segregation. But it will also be a signature green museum designed by the gifted architectural team of Freeland, Ajay, Bond, and the Smith Group, but a museum that soars on the resiliency of a people and will illuminate the joy and the belief in the promise of America that has shaped this community. This building will remind us that there are few things as powerful as a people, as a nation steeped in its history, and there is nothing nobler than honoring all of our ancestors by remembering the full, rich, and diverse history of America. And as with any endeavor of this sort, it has not been without challenges and difficult moments. But what boys all who work on this project has been the support that comes from unexpected quarters, such as the man who shines shoes in a Texas airport, who said to me, while he's unsure exactly what would be in a museum, he hoped that this museum would be, in his words, it may be the only place where his grandchildren learn what life did to him and what he did to life. 
or the woman who cleans one of the Smithsonian museums, who reminded me the other day that she is tired and able to retire. But she said to me, I want to continue to work so that I can clean our museum. So I would be remiss if I didn't thank the entire Smithsonian family for helping this museum make a way out of no way. The leadership of Secretary Clough and Richard Curran and, and the Regents, and I want to especially nod to my dear friend Patty Stonecipher for all her support. And I want, thank you Patty. And I especially want to acknowledge the gifted staff of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. <laughs> While I may stand in front of you, they do the work to make all things possible. During the Great Depression, historians were hired by the federal government to interview formerly enslaved African Americans. When 82-year-old Cornelius Holmes was asked if the experience of the enslaved still mattered, he answered, though the slavery question is settled, the race question will be with us always. It is in our politics, it is in our courts, it is on our highways, it is in our manners, it is in our religion and in our thoughts, all the day, every day. Well, what a gift you have all given by helping to birth this museum so that everyone who visits will realize that we are all touched, shaped, and enriched by African-American history and culture all the day, every day. Thank you very much. <laughs>